So I'd like to welcome Dr. Tom Reeves from University of Georgia, Athens. He's going to talk to us a little bit about educational design research. And this is kind of a continuation of a video series that was done at AERA back in 2007, I believe, perhaps 2008, a few years ago. And so we thought that we would kind of update the video archive that we have on YouTube with some new videos. So um, with that said, what we're going to be doing today is just kind of talking about how things have changed in educational design research since then, and the directions that Dr. Reeves' thinking have gone since that point. So that said, thank you for taking some time for me today, Dr. Reeves, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, how educational design research has changed since uh, the last time we created videos like this. Great. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, here we are in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, at the AECT conference. And uh, there are, I noticed on the program, there are a few reports of design-based research studies, but not as many as I'd like to see. Uh, I think one of the most interesting developments in a uh, recent uh, period was an article that came out in January of this year, published by Terry Anderson and one of his graduate students, in Educational Researcher, and uh, that's the number one journal in education. And they, uh, for that article, they basically reviewed the last 10 years of design-based research reported in various journals and found that, uh, uh, through their analysis, that basically the jury is still out on whether or not design-based research is attaining its two major outcomes, the outcome of robust interventions that really improve practice and reusable design principles that improve our ability to develop new interventions. Um, so they caution that, uh, you know, uh, design-based research uh, was a, 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 a useful approach, but really didn't have the good evidence to support it uh, wholesale, if you will. Uh, it, a couple months after that article came out, uh, Susan McKinney and I, uh, our new book came out called Conducting Educational Design Research. As you know, I prefer the term educational design research to design-based research, but that's kind of peripheral. But uh, <clears throat> And um, we wish we'd, we'd known about Terry's uh, article uh, before we uh, finished the book, but um, Anyway, uh, we have an article coming out in Educational Researcher early next year that's kind of a reaction to Anderson's article, and not critical of it so much as saying uh, we need to do better research on design-based research. Uh, and that better research would include, uh, rather than just synthesizing <coughs> the results of the published referee journal articles about design-based research to really go into those projects and interview practitioners and researchers and analyze the interventions and the design principles that came out of those projects and really take <coughs> excuse me <coughs> a more uh, robust look at uh, the outcomes of these projects. So that's one uh, development. We think we need more research on educational design research. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Dr. Reeves. It sounds to me that you are suggesting a meta-evaluative component to the generic process of educational design research that you promote in your new book. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. You know, in uh, medicine today, there's a lot of buzz about evidence-based practice. And people are synthesizing the results of various individual medical studies into uh, these meta-analyses, if you will, that uh, enable uh, real-time uh, evidence to be collected on the efficacy of various medical treatments or diagnosis procedures and that sort of thing. We need more of that kind of thing in education. And I'm not talking about the What Works Clearinghouse, because that has a, uh, too much of an emphasis just on traditional experimental research. Uh, but more of uh, a collection of 
design-based researchers focused on, say, a given problem. Maybe the problem is uh, the lack of uh, outcomes in with respect to creativity and entrepreneurship and uh, uh, the types of things that Professor Zhao spoke about here at the conference at his keynote, uh, which I thought was excellent. Uh, so, uh, or it could be focused on, uh, you know, why uh, girls and minorities aren't interested in STEM careers. So, uh, you know, we could have various uh, uh, repositories of design-based studies that would be feeding into a given meta problem, if you will. So I'd like to see some things like that happen as well. Interesting. And if you can project forward <coughs> five years from now, where do you see um, educational design research heading in that time? Well, I, I would like to think that a lot more doctoral students are using this methodology. I think that initially uh, some doctoral students shy away from it because they think, oh, it's too big, it's, it's something I couldn't do in the three or four years I'm going to devote to my doctoral studies. But I think if our faculty uh, take it up, and get projects going and funded that then their students can come in and plug in and do a piece of that overall design research agenda then that would really get the ball rolling so I'd like to see a lot more of that I also uh, another thing that design based research really lends itself to is uh, doing your dissertation by the research article format um, which in today's competitive world is absolutely essential I've noticed uh, when you're interviewing for new assistant professors, people have an expectation that they already have a publication record coming into a program. When I was a new assistant professor, that was not an expectation, but that's increasingly an expectation. So the, doing your dissertation through the article format really would give you an advantage in, in the competitive uh, world that we live in today. There aren't as many positions as there once were. I hope that's going to change as more and more people like me retire. There'll be more and more openings. I'm encouraging some of my colleagues to go ahead and retire. It's great. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I think uh, certainly uh, I'd like to think five years from now that uh, educational design research will be much more widely uh, adopted and also that we'll have better evidence that it really is having the impact that it was, it's uh, intended to have. Very good. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Dr. Reeves. Oh, you're welcome, Matthew. All right. You have a great rest of the conference. Thank you.